All right, so this is going to be a fairly quick video sharing with you how to create this design. This is a pattern that is subtracted from a surface, and I wanted to show you how to create this gradiated circle and subtract it from that surface. So it's a fairly quick tutorial showing you, those of you who are fairly new, how to use Grasshopper, and you can imagine how do you can use this on many other designs. So with that being said, thank you very much for being here. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a surface. And the way that I like to do this is using a rectangle. There's different ways we could do this, like creating a plane. But with this rectangle, we can give it the X and Y size. So let's go to the X and then tapping Alt, we can create a copy here. Now let's turn this into a surface. So boundary surfaces. Next, we're going to extract a point in the middle. So we'll use evaluate surface for this one. And to extract the point, we can use an MD slider. That's going to go 0.5 and 0.5. But if we reparameterize it, it will look at this as one and one and set this in the middle. So now that we have this, let's now pick a circle, create a circle on this frame. Now let's pick a radius for it. Next, we need to take this circle and divide it. So we'll use divide surface. This is going to give us a grid of points set inside of that circle. And now we can change the subdivisions. So now that we have these points, we're going to be creating a plane right at those points by going here to here, vector, plane, and then use a plane normal. So we can use the points as the origin and the normals as the Z axis. This is going to give us a reference plane. So we can even change the direction of where the original surface is at. And now we're going to be creating some circles at those planes. Now let's change the size of those circles by plugging in a radius. Let's make sure this is a little bit smaller. We can now hide this and see that we've created a grid and a set of circles right on that surface. Now, the cool thing is we can change the location of this using the empty slider, and we can change the number of subdivisions of how many we have using the divide surface. Now we're going to take all of these circles and we're going to scale them down with a gradient from the outside to the center. So to do that, we're going to create a curve closest points. This is going to help us determine how far this line segment is to the center of each and every one of those circles. So we need to now plug in the points into the point input, flatten the input, and set the outside circle as the curve. Now that we've done this, we can now take the distance, which is going to be a different set. Let's see here, we actually need to flatten this one, which they're going to change from outside to the center. 
So we actually need to take the distances and remap them. So we'll go to remap numbers and change the size of those by picking the target, which is going to be the minimum and maximum. And then the source is going to be bounds, which is going to give us the biggest and smallest number that we have. So 0 0.6 and then 78, that's going to go into the source. And the target will use construct domain to pick the largest and smallest number. So we're going to use this six as the end. Copy this and the start is going to be at zero. Now we can use this domain as the target and see that we've changed here once we plug this into the radius. We've changed the size from the outside to the inside, starting at zero here on the outside and then ending at six here in the middle. We can also flip that. So use the larger numbers on the outside and the bigger numbers on the inside. So this gives us control as to the minimum and maximum for those circles. Now, if you see all these points, that is how it calculates the distance between the outside curve to the center of every one of those. And that's how we can create this pattern. Next, we're going to take that surface and plug it in along with those circles. And if we flatten the input and hide that original surface, you'll see that now we've created a subtraction from that overall rectangle. We'll hide this. We can even increase the size of this if we want to. We can decrease the subdivisions and increase the size. And at some point, once you go past it, then it has a hard time creating that, that boundary. But now let's increase this, increase the divisions. And that was going to be the technique that I wanted to share with you guys is how to use curve closest points to create this radiated subtraction from a surface. Now, there's a lot of applications to this. You can take this to a facade and remove a pattern like this. You can also move this around. So let's decrease the size of this. Decrease subdivisions and also decreases maximum size. We can move this around on a surface. So this is why this is a useful technique is because you can imagine that let's say this is a facade and you wanted to create a window down here, but instead of just cutting it out and creating the window, you can create this radiated pattern. So let's now lastly go here to custom preview or bring this into a geometry component, then a custom preview. And change the swatch to be a different color. So the reason why we created this, these planes and also use this frame is because now we can take this, let's say line segment, bring this here, extrude it up, use a surface component to bring this into Grasshopper and then override that input and have this be located anywhere along that or do the opposite where it's smaller and then it gets a larger gradient from the center to the outside.
So hopefully you found that useful and learned a little bit more about how parametric design works. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for future videos. With that being said, thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you in the next video.